the Beretta Brothers. On this episode, I'm joined by Louise Gold, an actress and singer who has performed on stage in shows like Fiddler on the Roof, Assassins, and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. On screen, her credits include Strike Back, Black Adder, Coronation Street, and Hello, Hello. Fans of this podcast will be most familiar with her work for the Jim Henson Company, The Muppets, Sesame Street, and The Dark Crystal, performing such characters as Annie Sue, Fenella, Mean Mama, Gorman Skeksis, and Maudra Argot. She's with me today because she has some wonderful stories to tell. Unlike the long-form interviews we usually do on our show, these mini-episodes give our guests the chance to share one favorite memory about each of these very special people. Hello, Louise. Hello, Jean. Lovely to see you and speak with you. Lovely to see you, too. Louise Gold, what can yes. you tell me about Richard Hunt? Richard Hunt, one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, he, I went on some amazing holidays with him. We traveled to Venice via Switzerland on the train and via Verona, where uh, we stood on Juliet's balcony. Uh -huh. I think I stood on the balcony and he, he took a picture of me. And uh, we had an amazing, amazing holiday and went to Florence and to the Uffizi. We went all over uh, Siena. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just beautiful. And Richard nagged me the whole time because I never did. He, I one of Richard's things was you had to do it his way if you were on holiday. We also went uh, a family holiday uh, to Hawaii with all his family, and we never did it right. Uh, we went on a long drive to, we were on Maui, and we went on a long drive to a waterfall, and along the way we would go, oh, can we get off and look here? No, this isn't the right waterfall. You have to stay. You have to do it. But we'd really like to get it. No, there's a better one. That you have to go to the better one. And we, it was wonderfully infuriating <laughs> going on holiday with Richard because you had to do it his way. And as a lot of the time he was paying for most of it, ah. he kind of felt <laughs> that was kind of the deal. Yeah, that's why he paid for it all, so he could, he could control kind it. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, control. But he was wonderful, generous, um so so glorious to spend time with you know we would go out to dinner a lot in london and he would always tell everyone i'd be a bit shy and didn't want people to know we work for the muppets but he wanted to spread the joy and he knew people would love mm -hmm. uh the muppets and he would make friends he had so many friends from disparate places that he'd met and we went and stayed with people in England that he'd met on a train or something oh, wow. and we'd end up going to stay with them and the, the people we went to stay with in Switzerland on our trip we stopped off in Switzerland and stayed uh -huh. with people I don't know where he'd met them but he would just pick up people and he was so open uh -huh. and would just talk to anyone mm -hmm. That's so uh, nice. I never got to know him unfortunately yeah, he I was he was a one-off <laughs> but he was a, he was did want to control things and okay. um that was that was the price she paid but <laughs> but it was worth it you know small he was price. a wonderful yeah it was a small price and he was a wonderful wonderful you know a very good friend and and he was the person who took me under his wing when i got the job at muppets and i was 20 oh. and hadn't got a clue and it was a bit sink or swim, and Richard always kept an eye out for me and helped me and would whisper in my ear and, you know, be my champion. But Richard, you know, I it, just before the pandemic, I went out, there was a celebration for his mother who died um, just recently, and I went out and was part of that. And so, you know, Richard's, he was always horrible to me and said, you're like my sister. And so he felt he had to be like my brother and be bossy and annoying. And <laughs> But I was welcomed into his family 
And uh, as I say, I still, you know, I went out to stay with them all for the celebration of his mother. They, well, they're all over, but with the celebration was in, oh, I'm going to get the name wrong because I can't remember anything. The Elmwood Players, which is, oh, oh I was there, I stayed there. But it's the theatre where his mother, you know, she directed, she played leading oh. parts. She was the absolute uh. leading light of this theatre. So the celebration was in this theatre. Oh, okay. How oh, nice. That was absolutely lovely. Louise Gold, what can you tell me about Carol Spinney? I loved Carol Spinney. I didn't know Carol as well as I knew the others. But when I went on to Sesame Street, and I'd been there when um, Richard was alive. I'd visited Richard. But when I worked on it, Richard had just died. And Carol was so welcoming, so wonderfully kind, generous. And he gave me, he he was a wonderful artist and he'd drawn mm. a T-shirt with all Richard's characters oh. uh, as a sort of memorial, which was beautiful. So I got one of those T-shirts. Oh. And he was just fantastic. And to see him in Big Bird, this huge costume, which he wore, you know, he was doing Big Bird Till he was very old inside the costume yeah. without ever complaining, roller skating, just yeah. these crazy things he did. And he was, as I say, I didn't know him very well, but he was so generous, so kind. And again, the Muppet family, you know, I love Sesame Street. Again, when I went over there just before the pandemic, I went to see everyone at Sesame Street and it's like my family, even though, you know, these are people that I haven't seen very much over the years, but we are so connected. Yeah. And that is partly through Jim. We are all connected and we all share this family thing. It is an incredible thing to be part of. Yeah. And and I feel very lucky to still be part of that. And um, I got the link for Carol's funeral so I, I was there mm -hmm. although I was in England and and saw that and it was beautiful and I feel very lucky to have worked very privileged to have worked with Carol even briefly yeah yeah I know I've, Fran and I talked about his generosity and mm -hmm. drawings and things like that yeah mm -hmm. very much so yeah. well Louise Gold what can you tell me about Jerry Nelson I love Jerry Nelson. Jerry and I did a lot of duets together on The Muppet Show, and it was one of my favorite things. I I can't believe how lucky I was. You know, when you're young, you I was always, oh, well, I want to be an actress. I, you know, I am doing these puppets. But I were, we were singing with the Jack Parnell, who was one of the great conductors and his full orchestra. Now, when we do stuff with the puppets, often it's all done on a computer. There is no orchestra. There is no musicians. It's all put together digitally. But we were lucky enough. We sang with this incredible, incredible orchestra who did all this fantastic stuff. And my most favorite thing was Jerry and I would often do duets and I just adored him. I loved working with him. Um, he was such a lovely, lovely gentleman. And when we were first working together, it was very difficult for him because his daughter was ill and oh. she came over and was spending time. She had cystic fibrosis hmm. and he was going through that in The Muppet Show, and it was really hard, I think, for him. And and she would spend some time over here, and he would go back there. But he knew she was dying. And so I think that was a huge weight on him Yeah. throughout think, that time. It, sorry, do you think it helped at least give him some distraction from that pain and stress to have to be busy? Sometimes that helps. Yes, I think it was a mixed thing. You know, he was over here and away from her. But as I say, she came over and she has a little part in uh, the Muppet, Muppet Caper, I think. 
one of one of the, the either I think it's Muppet Caper. She has a little bit in. She appears in, and she was an absolutely beautiful, beautiful girl, Christine. And um, so, yeah, I I think because I know Jerry when he came over, he he was slightly less involved in the Muppet Show than he might have been because of Christine, I think. And so there was a sort of frustration that he wasn't one of the leading characters. But his contribution in his characters was so phenomenal. And the, the thing that is so magical about the team that was the Muppet Show originally, Dave, Frank, Jim, Richard and Jerry, was the flavours. They all brought such different right. flavours. And Jerry had a sort of laid back, his musicality, his sensibility, his, his slightly... Signature, his signature voice, especially when he was yeah. singing. Yeah. 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 So, so the flavour he brought to it and some of his musical numbers, ones I did with him, but some of his solos were just New York state of mind. I remember him doing that. Just beautiful and halfway up the stairs, you know. And, and watching that, just beautiful. And, you know, all the Muppet performers are not puppeteers. They are puppeteers, but they are performers. They are so much more. They're not just puppeteers. They are great actors. Mm -hmm. with they happen to do it through a puppet but their vocal skills and their heart the thing that makes the Muppet so special is the heart because all those performers bring their love and their souls into their characters and mm -hmm. that is the special thing right Louise Gold what can you tell me about Jane Henson Jane Henson was so well <laughs> well, they were all so kind and generous. Everyone was so kind and generous. <laughs> Jane, but they were, you know, everyone. I was a little bit older than her children, but not much. And Jane would come over and visit and come onto the set and was like a lovely mummy. She was gorgeous. And Jim would always be buying her presents, these amazing works of art dresses, I remember, that were not dresses as you would know it, they sh they were like tapestries, these oh, no. incredible creations that I remember her wearing. And I, she was just glorious. And another holiday, these amazing holidays I went on, when we finished Dark Crystal, Lou Grade gave Jim a week on his uh, yacht, the Cardigray, oh, no. and... I went on it and Jane went on it and um, Jim's secretary went on it and her boyfriend. And we had this incredible week touring around the south of France wow. uh, and, you know, everyone just having a wonderful time. The crew on the boat loved it because they usually had Lou Grade and people, rather stuffy business people. Oh. And we were doing things like the water skiing and enjoying it and involving the crew who were all lovely and young. But I think they were just used to rather stuffy yeah, yeah. people. But but right. so I just have such happy memories of of Jane as just a warm, you know, the, I think anyone you talk to about the Henson family, well, maybe not anyone, but most people, you know, it's a family. It was a family business. It's always felt like that. Mm. And because I was younger as well, Jim felt like a father and Jane felt like a, a lovely mother figure. Yeah, you know, we when we were talking to, when Billy and I were talking to Dave mm. and Frank, we, mm. were, we were playing give one word answers to these names mm. and we brought up Jane and Frank said mother. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. consistent with that. Yeah. 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 Louise Gold, Louise Gold, do you have a story about John Henson while we're on that? I love Johnny. You know what was so lovely? I hadn't seen Johnny. He was always around the studios. And Richard, Richard and Johnny got on well because Johnny was the kind of slightly wild child. And Richard loved Johnny. 
and he was a glorious, glorious boy. And I hadn't seen him for years. And then at Jerry's memorial, I went out in 2013, was it? And I saw Johnny and I hadn't seen him for such a long time. And he was telling me a story about a mutual friend that Jerry and he had that they did not, this friend didn't know that they knew each other because neither of them talked about the Muppets. <laughs> they had these other lives. So they only found out, I, I think maybe when Jerry died, he found out that oh. they had this mutual friend because they just didn't go into that side of, of their life. So I was, I just felt so lucky that I saw John before mm. he died. Yeah. And he was still, you know, this beautiful, beautiful, you know, I remember because he had a car crash when he was younger and smashed his nose up. Oh, really? And he was such oh. a beautiful boy. Yeah. Yeah. When he was, when he was 21 or something, he had a, a car mm. crash. You know, you reminded me of a, a quick memory I'll share about him when I when I was over there visiting from up at Treasure Island. Mm. He was he had some free time and he took me up. He said, "Come on, let's go." And we went up mm. and walked around the rafters of the stage, and mm. it was so cool just watching the whole production happen below us and the huge ship below mm. us. It was a really special mm. memory. Louise Gold, uh, what can you tell us about Jim Henson? You know, when I think of Jim, I think of laughing. Mm -hmm. I I remember one time in the studio, Jim had this thing at one point. He started wearing Liberty Print shirts. Now, Liberty's is a very famous English store, and Liberty Print is a floral print. So they have the, the design, sort of design. So he, he got into Liberty Print shirts, which is sort of flowery prints. And then he would wear a Liberty Print tie. And this was on the studio floor where it was pretty dirty and, you know, right. Frank wore um, khaki. He had a khaki uniform, but Jim wore these Liberty Prints. And then Amy Van Gilder, who was one of the puppet builders, brilliant, wonderful, wonderful Amy, who uh, she made him some plimsolls. Uh, do you call them plimsolls? Tackies? I don't, I don't know. What gym they're... shoes. Oh, oh, like gym strangers? shoes. Yeah, just gym shoes. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And she cut out fabric and stuck it on flowery fabric to match <laughs> his shirt. And then her final thing was she made a pair of like harem pants of flowery material and stripped Jim of his trousers, put these flowery trousers on in the studio. <laughs> and, you know, how many bosses would you do that to? But Jim loved jokes. He he laughed, and he was one of us, you know. Yeah. And when I joined, you know, I was very, I was 20, and sort of a, a big deal. But it never felt like that. And I worked... You know, I would be Jim's right hand in Link and Rolf and various characters. So, you know, you were sitting on the floor under the set for hours together and you were part of the team. And Jim was always part of the team. He was always there leading from the front. Uh, well, another time, yes, he was doing, he was a guest on some show in Germany, in Wiesbaden, and he asked if I'd come and do his right hand. I can't remember what character, if it was Kermit, maybe it was Kermit's hand. And we flew out and Lisa came with us and we got a helicopter from Elstree to Luton Airport and then we got a small plane to Wiesbaden. Duncan Kenworthy was with us as well. Mm. And we went wandering the night before we were doing the show, we went wandering and Jim said, oh, let's go to a discotheque. And I I kind of, I haven't got anything to wear. Right, we're going to buy you something to wear, whatever you want. <laughs> and I, I felt really embarrassed. And anyway, I got some T-shirt with, it was very tacky in a market or something, with a, like it had a tiger. This was fabric, not real, yeah. but a tiger, a little tail down the back. So we could go out to the disco. But it was... And then we went and had dinner in after, I think it must have been after we'd done the show, in this amazing restaurant with silver terrines. I remember the waiters coming and bringing 
these our food and lifting the terrines all at the same time. And I'd never been out to dinner. I'd been to the wimpy bar, you know, the English McDonald's. This was so beyond anything I'd ever done. But it never felt in England that would be very posh and people would all be very um snotty and snobby about it but Jim's was like I'm having the best time ever and we're all going to share it why yeah. wouldn't I I'm living the perfect life I'm doing my job that I love oh, yeah. I'm I've got money it's only fun if I share it with the people I'm working with yeah. so it, it was such a generosity of you know his gift of of love and generosity of the show and his enjoyment of the show. And he had this Kermit Green, um, uh, was it a Lamborghini? I don't know cars, but it's, you know, a fancy car that the, the headlights went, zzz, they went up and they would always break and one would. And the first time he drove it into the studios, the exhaust got caught on one of the ramps and because, because it was so low. Uh -huh. um, but, but his joy you know, he he didn't squirrel his his gifts away. It was sharing yeah. it, sharing his gifts with the world and with the people he worked with. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>